Hello everybody, I uh, am here with a little tutorial about how we can cache out the movements we make with our mouse when we're manipulating the vellum brush. So this is a question that I got from a student of mine based off of the last course that I did. I'm gonna just kinda show a couple of ways that I figured out how we can do that, how we can record the animations that we make with our uh, vellum brush. So let's just start off by creating a nice little cloth object here. I'm gonna give myself some space, hit the tab key and type uh, geo. A little geometry node here and then let's double click to dive inside there and I'll hit the tab key and we'll drop down a grid like so and then I'm just gonna hit spacebar F to frame up that grid and I'm gonna remesh this so let's remesh like so and let's maybe just bring the target size down to 0.1 so we have some cloth resolution there and then I'm going to throw down a vellum brush Actually, what I need is a vellum brush, and I also need a vellum cloth, vellum configure cloth. Because uh, we've got to configure our cloth before we throw it in the vellum brush. So let's throw the remesh into the first input on the vellum cloth, and then let's wire all three of these together. Whoops. And if I click on the vellum brush um, and highlight my manipulator here, we get the compiling OpenCL kernels thing for a beat. And after maybe 30 seconds, we are back here. And I can now use this, uh, with this manipulator selected right here, I can use this um, this brush to uh, kind of move my cloth around and stuff like that. So this is really what the, what the question was about, is how can we record these movements that I'm making and save them as an animation? And I discovered two ways of doing this. I'm gonna just reset my vellum brush right now. So I'm gonna say reset all changes here. And the first way that I figured out how to record this was using the file nodes. This is similar to file caching, except you can actually do it while you're playing back in the timeline. So let's throw it on a file node. And if we just put our display fag on there, you can see that by default it is loading this default cube here called default.bgl. And um, it's set to read files and we can't really um, do anything with this until we wire something in. So I'm gonna take the output, the first output of the vellum brush, I'm gonna wire that in here into the file. And then you see that we have the opportunity to select different options right here. Before I select a different option, what I'm gonna do is actually change where the geometry file is being written out to. So let's create a, a little folder for ourselves where we can cache this out. We're gonna call, uh, we're gonna call it dollar sign hip so that we can put it next to where our current uh, project file is. And then we'll just make a folder called vellum cache. And inside that folder, we'll create another cache. Uh, we'll create a file called vellum cache and we'll put dollar sign f.bgo.sc, like so. So this is actually going to write files into uh, this directory right here, uh, vellum cache next to our hip file, and then create files that look like that. And so now, if I have the display flag on my file here, and I, and I back up here, and I switch this over to write files, you can see that in my project folder right here, it's created this vellum cache folder, and inside there is vellum cache um, dot one dot bgo dot sc because we're on frame one right here. Um, so now I want to make sure I've got the display flag set on here and then I can click on the vellum brush to have the vellum brush selected so that I can use it in the viewport. And then if I click the play button here, making sure that I'm in real time mode, I've got the real time toggle selected right here. You can see that we're actually writing files out to disk. It's actually just going through the whole timeline and writing files off. And then it actually loops back to the beginning of the timeline and it's continuing to write these files out. And you can't really tell right now, but the timestamps are changing. So to prevent that, I might go down here and just set the timeline. This looks like an arrow with that goes to the right and then kind of hops back. I'm just gonna set this to play once. That means that once we get to the end of the timeline, if I click play, it just stops once it gets to the end of the timeline. It won't like go back and start overwriting what we've done. So then what I can do is uh, let's go back to frame one and I'm going to, again, make sure I got the vellum brush selected. I got my display flag on file one and click play. And I'm just gonna start brushing around in the viewport. Notice how when my mouse is down, the timeline is playing back slower. The performance is not super great doing it this way uh, because we are like doing a disk write and all these calculations at the same time. But if I hit the stop button, 
and then switch my file mode back to read files. If we don't do this, if I if I were to just grab the timeline and scrub the timeline while it was on write files, it would literally just record a freeze frame of this last frame. So it's very touchy, you kind of got to get used to it. But now that I've switched this back to read files, I can uh, just scrub this timeline. You can actually see if I click play, here are the movements that I did with my brush. And you'll notice here that the playback seems faster than it should be. And this is because my computer falls out of sync with real time. Playback will be much smoother using the method I'll go over after this. So that's cool. That's the first way of doing this sort of a thing. Now, the other way that I figured out how to do it was actually modifying the inside of the vellum brush itself. What the vellum brush is actually doing is pretty complicated. It's pretty impressive that it actually is able to do what it's able to do. And I'm not fully sure how it works, but diving inside, there's just a couple little check boxes we can tick and it's not that bad to uh, get this thing to kind of cash out to the timeline. So I'm going to just set my display flag to the vellum brush and I'm going to set this file cache off to the side and I'm just going to right click on the vellum brush and say, allow editing of contents. And then we can dive inside here. You can see that there's this big old network that has been built to accomplish the vellum brushiness that we know and love. And where all the magic happens is down here at this .NET minimal uh, that we have right here. So what we can do here is actually, let's just take a look at this. On the .NET, you can see that there's this caching tab. And by default, usually .NETs are caching the simulation to the timeline. And you'll see the blue bar fill up down here. And in this situation, that's actually turned off because it's just giving us this instantaneous state of whatever the simulation is in when we stop using our vellum brush. So if I turn on cache simulation right here, I can actually maybe if you have got additional memory on your computer, you can crank this up a little bit. I'm going to crank mine up to 20,000 uh, me megabytes um, just so I have you know a lot of room to store cache data. And then before this time shift that sort of locks it to the current state of the simulation, I'm actually going to just create a little null that I can grab onto right here. So let's throw it on a null and let's just wire in the dotnet. And here I'm just going to name this something like a uh, grab vellum cache. Just a nice, easy to find node when I go to actually write this out to disk. So I'm going to just hop back up here and I'm going to click on the vellum brush and say reset all changes. And similarly to what we did before, let's go back to frame zero. I'm going to hit play and just start brushing around. Here you'll notice that the timeline slows down again and it seems laggy, but when I lift my mouse up, it jumps ahead in time. This, it's actually able to keep up with my mouse closer to real time and the cache will play back a much smoother animation. And now if I hit stop and go back to the first frame, and scrub this, I'm not seeing anything, but if I dive inside the vellum brush here and click on the dot net, you can see that it has actually cached that all out on the timeline like so. And what I can do now is come back up here, create a file cache node and cache this out the normal way. So I don't actually want the file cache node coming out of here. I'm actually going to pull in a object merge and I'm going to reference that grab vellum cache that we created inside here. So let's go inside the vellum brush and say grab vellum cache, say accept and wire that in here to our file cache. And then I can uh, click save to disk. And now with the file cache selected with load from disk selected, I can scrub this timeline and I have successfully recorded the um, movements that I've made with the vellum brush uh, like so. So it is a little bit of a tricky workflow. It's a little weird, but um, it actually works. If you wanted, if you were doing something with the vellum brush and you wanted to, um, you know, kind of record it, you could do it this way. Obviously, you'd want to make sure that you don't get too out of hand with the resolution. It's pretty limited. It's pretty finicky. But these are a couple of ways that you can uh, actually cache out your movements in the viewport with the vellum brush. So I hope you thought that was helpful, and I'll see you again in a new tutorial some other time. Thanks.